Today we are going to be talking about the electromagnetic spectrum. We're jumping into a new chapter here, um, and this will be your introduction to uh, to all kinds of energy. You are most familiar with visible light, uh, this narrow band of the electromagnetic spectrum that your eyes can detect, but we use all different parts of this spectrum for different purposes. Um, and the dominion that we have over creation, we have lots of different reasons and ways to use this spectrum of energy. And so we're going to be exploring that uh, today. Where's my next thing? So the electromagnetic spectrum um, is the kind of energy that can propagate itself and travel without needing to be in a medium. Um, sound waves, that, which is what we've been studying more recently, sound waves have to happen in a medium. Um, you can't make noise in space. There will be no noise in space. And so, um, you know, if, if a spaceship were to run into another spaceship and you were outside, that would be a silent activity um, because sound needs a medium to propagate through. But light and things like it, can propagate without a medium. That they can travel, these waves can travel in a vacuum. And so that's what makes them unique. Um, they're also called electromagnetic because um, the electric wave and the magnetic wave travel together. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a moment here. But uh, visible light is the most common form of this energy, but it's just a small little sliver of it. Um, radio waves, microwaves, uh, these are all also parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. And so uh, depending on, on how rapidly the energy oscillates up and down, um, we, we are able to do different things with it and we interact with it a little bit differently. So um, all of this energy travels through a vacuum at the same speed, but it has different wavelengths. So uh, if, the, if it's progressing along at a particular speed, the difference is not how fast in the x-axis it travels. The difference is how many times in the y-axis it goes up and down while it's traveling in the x-axis at the same at the same speed, right? So the amount of uh, the difference in difference in the energy has to do with how frequently it oscillates for uh, any unit of of distance that it travels in the x-direction. Okay, different wavelengths, same speed. The speed of light in a vacuum, the speed of also of microwaves and gamma waves and radio waves, the speed of electromagnetic radiation in a vacuum is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's three and then eight zeros. Okay, so that would be, uh, what would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, 300 million, yeah, 300 million meters every second. 300 million meters every second. That's ridiculously fast, right? That is so fast that it only takes light eight minutes to go from the sun to the earth. So that's a huge amount of, of, of distance to travel in only eight minutes. Um, so this is, this is the speed of light or the speed of electromagnetic energy in a vacuum. Here's that graphic that I had earlier. Um, the electromagnetic spectrum can be seen as a, as a logarithmic scale from very long wavelengths to very, very short wavelengths. And we're going we're gonna to journey through the electromagnetic spectrum in this lecture, looking at different chunks of it and, uh, and what we can do with those different uh, wavelengths of energy as it journeys through. Okay, As we said before, the electromagnetic spectrum is unique in that the, uh, the magnetic field oscillates in one direction and the electric field oscillates in another direction. So we're used to seeing waves written out like, like this, right? But the electromagnetic energy has one wave that oscillates this way and another wave that oscillates this way. So it's a unique form of energy that is it's traveling through space if I can make my fingers do that. It's traveling through space kind of like that, which is weird. Um, but that's part of why it's able to propagate itself without a medium, is the electric field actually causes the magnetic field, and the magnetic field actually causes the electric field, and they keep each other going as they travel through the vacuum of space. So that's kind of cool. 
take just a second and write that down, and I will be right back with you. So electric magnet, uh, I can say that, electromagnetic energy, there you go, has some properties that behave as if it's a wave, and we know that it's a wave. But it also has some properties that behave as if it's a particle. And you haven't had enough physics to know how weird that is, but some things are particles. They're chunks of matter. And chunks of matter behave in a particular way. And some things behave as if they're waves. Electromagnetic energy is both. Like you can put light through a particular kind of test and have it behave as if it's a particle. And you can put light through another kind of test and have it behave as if it's a wave. And so one of the big like weirdisms in physics is, is light a wave or a particle? Yes, it's both. How can a particle be a wave? It's just, it doesn't make sense, but it's true. And so this is, uh, this is one of the cool, you know, kind of edges of physics where people are trying to figure out how is it that light is both a wave and a particle, but it is. Um, and one of the ways that we can know that it is a wave is that we can bend it. Um, when we talked about sound waves and about other kinds of waves and oscillating media, uh, it, you can bend a wave by changing the, uh, the medium that it's in. You can bend a wave by passing it by another object. You can bend a wave by sending it through a slit. And I showed you pictures of that with like water waves and how waves uh, passing by a, uh, a breakwater will turn or waves that pass through a slit will spread out. And we talked about that. Light does that. And so that's, that's a wave kind of thing to do. But light also will uh, only energize in discrete uh, amounts and, and like chunky amounts. You can't get a solar panel to produce a smooth band of energy. It will be chunky. It'll either produce this much energy or this much energy and not something in between which is particle-like. Um, so it's, it's both a particle and a wave, and that's weird, and that's weird on purpose. Um, I'm sure God did that so that we would realize that we don't know everything, or at least we don't know everything today. Um, this is, these are some cool things that we can do because light can be bent. Um, the, the radio telescopes here, they are able to look at a star that is actually hidden behind another star. And if, if light were to travel in a straight line, then the telescopes shouldn't be able to see the red star because the white star is in the way. But the white star is so massive that the, uh, the light coming from this red star actually gets bent by the white star and can, get, can be picked up by the telescopes. So you wind up with an image like this, and it looks like there is a monstrous large red star behind a smaller white star, but in truth, it's a pretty small red star. It's just that the light from it is being bent around the white star, which is pretty cool. You can see past an object because of light's ability to be bent. That's called a lensing, gravitational lensing. And this is another example of that. Um, there's uh, various objects here. You can see uh, one color background behind another one, just like that example. This is a lensed quasar. There's other examples here of, of other stars that are being seen behind this star where the light is being bent around it. You can see several examples of that in this screenshot from the Hubble telescope. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, take another moment and write that down. Okay, we're going to take a tour through the electromagnetic spectrum. So we're going to start with the longest wavelengths in the spectrum, which are the radio waves. Radio waves, uh, now remember, they all travel at the same speed. But we're talking about how long it is, how far it is from one peak to the next peak, okay? Um, and for radio waves, that's the longest length of any kind of electromagnetic energy. 10 to the 6th meters one followed by six zeros would be um, something like a million, is that right? That's a million meters long. That's a thousand kilometers long. That's 600 miles, okay? 600 miles from one peak to the next peak. That's a very slowly oscillating uh, energy form. 
right? Um, but radio waves can be very, very long, very low frequency radio waves, or you can have much higher radio waves that go up, down, up in one millimeter, so very short amount of space. So radio waves have a huge, broad uh, range of ability to travel, um, or the, the frequencies can be very widely spaced. And we use that because we tune to different frequencies. When you tune to a different frequency of radio, you're tuning your car to listen to the energy that's oscillating at a particular frequency. So that very large band of energy, we cut up into all different channels and we use in different ways. Okay. First kind of energy uh, was that was described after light. So light was obviously the first one we knew about because God gave us eyeballs. But once we started looking at other forms of this energy, the next one we discovered was radio waves. Um, and the FM radio listens to energy right around 10 meters of wavelength. And the television listens to energy right around one meter of wavelength. And so we use these different bands for different purposes. Microwave radiation. Um, micro means small, right? So if these are potentially larger waves, these are smaller waves, and we call it microwave radiation, but it's not definitely the smallest um, at all. Microwave radiation um, can be anywhere from 10 centimeters. Now you notice there's an overlap. 10 centimeters is bigger than one millimeter. So there's some electromagnetic energy that we could use for radio and we could use for cooking. And then there's some electromagnetic energy that we can only use for microwave purposes. And that goes down to about a tenth of a millimeter, okay? Um, and we use this for communication, we use it for navigation, we use it for obviously heating things up. So various purposes there. So radio waves, um, radio waves can be used in lots of different uh, applications. Some of them can be bounced off of the atmosphere actually, which is pretty cool. That allows you to send radio signals around the curvature of the earth if you can get it to bounce back and forth. Um, we use radio waves for communicating between satellites and ground systems. Uh, microwave ground waves, we can send information from tower to tower. So radio energy and microwave energy is used quite a bit in communication. Um, this is a picture of a radio telescope array where all of these big dishes are radio antennas. And when we point tons of radio antennas at the same object, they can be useful like telescopes are uh, to create images and understand what's out there. So this is like looking at a star in the radio spectrum instead of looking at a star in the visible spectrum. And uh, these large radio wave telescopes that are set in big long arrays are actually very, very useful in astronomy. The largest radio telescope in the world is this one right here. It is in South America. And um, it was it was featured in, it's been featured actually in a couple of movies. It's usually set as like some kind of secret government military installation. Uh, it was in a James Bond movie, James Bond Goldeneye. Um, but it's just a radio telescope and it is watching the sky and trying to understand stars like a normal visible telescope would be. Okay. Um, this is a uh, an example of what a radio telescope would see versus what a visual telescope would see. So the radio telescope image of Jupiter um, obviously doesn't look the same as the visible light image of Jupiter, but we can see things there that we can't see in the visible spectrum, like some of the energy banding and seeing kind of around the planet. Um, so it'll, it gives us another way of studying objects in space. And of course, microwave energy gets used to heat up things like your food. Um, and the way that it does that is it shakes water molecules because of the small energy oscillations and, uh, and heats things up. Microwave energy can also be used for communication. These are microwave uh, transmission towers that send energy um, and communication like radio waves do from point to point. Obviously, do not microwave your head. There you go. Take a moment and write that down. <laughs> The next chunk of the electromagnetic spectrum is the infrared area. And we call this infrared. Infra means below red. So these are less energetic than red light. Um, and so it's the energy spectrum just below visible light. Um, and it's emitted by hot objects. And so anything that has any kind of thermal energy in it 
is emitting um, is emitting light, is emitting electromagnetic energy. When something gets warm enough uh, that we would perceive it as warm in our common sense of things, um, then the energy that it's emitting is in the spectrum of infrared light. So you can see hot objects with an infrared camera, um, and that's, uh, that's part of the whole night vision technology that allows people to see in the dark is seeing things that are warm. I'll give you some examples of that. Um, and so you are giving off electro, uh, electromagnetic radiation right now in the infrared spectrum. And then as something gets hotter and hotter, sometimes that, that energy uh, is transmitted out in the visible light spectrum. And so as the wavelengths get shorter, as something gets hotter, then it goes from being from emitting infrared light that we cannot detect with our eyeballs to emitting visible light that we can. So that's when you say something is like red hot or white hot. That's because it's so hot that it's not giving off just infrared energy. It's giving off visible light energy and we can detect it with our eyes. Uh, so the wavelengths there are from one millimeter to about one picometer, one times 10 to the negative six meters. So a decimal point, six zeros in a one. Um, and that is a very, very, very small number. So the wave lengths here are getting really small and things are oscillating very quickly as they travel. Again, it's traveling at the same speed along some, some axis. It's just that it's going up and down much faster as it travels that same speed in the X direction, okay? Some infrared light can be seen by animals. Um, pit vipers and some other uh, animals are able to see into the infrared which allows them to see heat. Um, and so if you're a cold-blooded animal and you're hunting a warm-blooded animal, like a rattlesnake uh, is hunting a mouse, then it's really cool because at night you can, everything else is, is cooler and then the mouse stands out in your vision as this warm object. And it'd be a, it's an advantage for those pit vipers who are hunting at night. Um, visible light would be the next chunk of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's all colors that we can see. And so we call it visible light because it's what our eyeballs can pick up. Um, and so it's not like it's fundamentally a different form of energy than infrared. It's just that it's what God has allowed us to perceive. And uh, I put Roy G. Viv there because that's kind of the, the way of remembering the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Um, and these are just arbitrarily, you know, lines drawn through the spectrum. Uh, but this is the order of, light as we perceive it. Um, the wavelength of, of visible light is from 750 nanometers to 400 uh, nanometers. One nanometer is 10 times, uh, one times 10 to the ninth, to the negative ninth meter. So a decimal point, nine zeros and a one. Um, these are very, very, very small oscillations, okay? So pictures, uh, this again, the light spectrum involves visible light what we can see, and then the light that's down here is not fundamentally a different kind of light than this light. It's just that we can't see this. We can see this. And so we call this infrared below red, and then the other side of that would be ultraviolet above violet. Um, and so, again, this is just light energy. It's just light energy our, our eyeballs cannot pick up. Infrared lights are sometimes used to heat things up. Uh, this is a picture of infrared, infrared lights in an outdoor patio setting where it's used as a, as a heat source, a heat lamp, to warm people up if they want to sit on the patios when it's cold outside. I know you live in Hawaii, you've never experienced cold outside, but in some parts of the world it does get cold and you wouldn't want to sit outside, but these lamps help you see that you can. This is a visible light spectrum picture of a galaxy, and then this is the infrared light spectrum picture of that same galaxy, and it looks like a horror movie. Um, but it's just picking up light in a different spectrum and then transmitting that light as an image that we can perceive. So it's moved the light from the infrared up into the visible and just changed its color so that we can see it. But this is the, these are the objects giving off infrared light in that galaxy. It looks, looks kind of creepy. Um, this is an image of a hand holding a lizard. And so in, in the infrared spectrum, a person a mammal gives off more heat than that lizard does. So the lizard looks kind of bluey purple and the mammal, the human holding it looks 
warmer. Um, we can we can take visible light and break it up in the spectrum. And again, this is this is visible light. There would be infra infrared over here and ultraviolet over here, and we'll see that in the lab tomorrow. Take a moment to write that down. We've got a couple more categories, and then we'll be done. Ultraviolet light is the next energy. So just like infrared is below visible light, ultraviolet is above visible light. Smaller wavelengths again, um, 400 nanometers to 10 nanometers. So we're getting to very fast oscillations as the energy moves down, down, the, down the track. Um, this energy is of the wavelengths that has enough energy in it that it can cause damage to your skin. This is the kind of light that we try to keep you away from when moms and dads tell you to put on sunscreen. The sunscreen doesn't keep the visible light off. Obviously, you don't disappear. We can still see you. So the visible light gets through the sunscreen. Wouldn't that be cool? We found sunscreen that blocked visible light. You put it on and then you would just, there'd be this shadow walking around. Uh, but also, the sunscreen that we use doesn't do that. It blocks the ultraviolet light and it reflects that off of your skin because if your skin gets enough of this stuff, this is how you get skin cancer. This is how you get skin burns, uh, sunburns, those kinds of things. X-rays is the next chunk up. Very short wavelengths, 10 nanometers down to uh, one one hundredth of a nanometer. So if one nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth, one one hundredth of a nanometer would be 10 to the negative 11th meters. Incredibly small. Um, the, uh, the energy is oscillating very rapidly, lots of energy. This penetrates most materials. And so because of that, you know, we get shadows from various objects. You can get a radio shadow very easily because radio waves have lower energy. They tend to go around objects, but not through them. Um, light casts a shadow and you can see I can get a shadow with my hand because the light doesn't penetrate my hand. Um, and I cast a shadow. But x-rays have so much energy that they go right through most materials, which means that it's very hard to get an x-ray shadow, right? X-ray energy just goes through stuff. And so because of that, we use it for imaging because it penetrates things. And so it penetrates your tissues and it bounces off of your bones. And then we get this, uh, this image of where the x-ray has gone through soft tissue and has reflected off of hard tissue, and we can see if your bones are good. Um, and so we use it for imaging in that sense as well because it has so much energy, it is so high energy. Um, some pictures here. This is an ultraviolet light bulb, uh, sometimes called a black light, and you're just seeing the edges of the spectrum that fade into what we can perceive, but there's actually a lot more light coming out of that bulb um, in spectrums that we can't see. So. Sometimes that's used at parties, but it's also fun because lots of things fluoresce or glow under ultraviolet light. These rocks uh, are not actually these colors in normal lighting, but when you put these rocks under black lights, they glow in all kinds of cool different colors. And this is one of the ways that geologists can identify what minerals they're looking at is because they're able to see um, how does it fluoresce or what color does it turn under black light. Um, Scorpions also fluoresce under black light, um, and and uh, in in the Phoenix area of Arizona, I didn't live there. I don't know why anybody would live in Phoenix, but lots of people do. Um, there are scorpions out there, and it's not uncommon to see people with black light flashlights walking around their lawns at night. Well, I don't have lawns because it's so stupid hot. Walking around their gravel um, at night with mallets and they're looking for scorpions. And, and it's dark, and then you just shine your black light flashlight around, and the scorpions will pop glow like this, and you can see right where they are. And then you just go and pop them with a mallet and kill them. And people will do that, you know, every couple of nights in the, in the, wind, in the peak of the summer when the scorpions are coming out um, in the evening and to try to keep the scorpion population down in their property. So that's really fun. Um, one of the billions of reasons not to move to Phoenix. Um, sun, sun tanning beds are, uh, are built to broadcast ultraviolet light onto people, but beware, um, if you are a tanner, you are also a skin cancer person. Um, and so skin will be damaged by long-term exposure to ultraviolet light. And even if it isn't melanoma, which is what this is, this is a melanoma spot, you can get other just you know sunspots on your skin 
And this isn't a real person, but this is a composite image showing what skin not exposed to ultraviolet light might look like, as opposed to skin that has been exposed a lot to ultraviolet light. Um, so this is uh, just, just a warning. Do wear sunscreen. Um, do cover up if you're going to be outside. Um, so make sure that you are wearing sunscreen. Protect yourself. <laughs> there you go. We use x-rays um, to see things. And so we can see images of bones. And this is, a, this is a, I think, a cat. Um, and you can look right through some objects and understand what's there. Um, and then, of course, this is Homer Simpson, uh, whose whose X-ray image reveals <laughs> oh, that's reveals, my brain. <laughs> reveals no brain. Um, we're using that image now in airports, uh, the the back scatter X-ray machine that um, takes kind of a, a diluted X-ray of you and sees what you might be carrying on your person. We can also use X-rays in astronomy as well to look out and see what X-ray light is being emitted by stars. This is an X-ray telescope image of a star. That's pretty, pretty beautiful. Last one, gamma rays. Take a second and write that down, and then we will be done. The highest energy uh, from the electromagnetic spectrum is the gamma rays. And these are actually um, technically also part of the X-ray family. They're just a, uh, the upper edge of the X-ray family. This is the most destructive form of electromagnetic energy. It's only created by changes in nuclei. So you can only get gamma radiation when a nucleus changes state through nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. Um, and this is wavelengths of less than a tenth of a nanometer. Um, and so these things produce lots and lots and lots and lots of energy. We only get them from big booms. So here's some pictures. This is a nuclear bomb test. And along with, obviously, lots of visible light energy and lots of infrared light energy, there's also a lot of gamma ray and x-ray light energy coming out of this. And those uh, forms of energy will do just as much damage as the shock wave and the heat and the fire. Um, so you don't want to be around when one of those goes off. This is a gamma ray image of a star. And you can see, um, again, every kind of, of electromagnetic telescope that you use gives you a different image of an object and you can learn different things from it. So this is another gamma ray image of a star. This is what the star would look like in the visible spectrum. This is what it looks like in the gamma spectrum. So very cool. That is it.